It's no secret that as car enthusiasts, we're pretty passionate about our cars. And you know, when your buddies get together, silly things tend to happen. So when my buddies Gears and Gasoline said, we want to challenge you to a drag race, the only answer to give them was, son of a gun, I'm in. And big thanks to Advance Auto Parts for sponsoring this entire series. This is episode two of a four part series to see who's faster in a quarter mile, a JDM car or a European car with a maximum budget of $5,000. The car I found for this challenge is a 2007 Volkswagen Jetta GLI. This car has a two liter turbo engine with a broken timing chain. So in this video, not only are Paul and I gonna fix it, we're gonna modify it and we might even get it on the dyno. So since the last video, I did some mad research and scouring the internet and found some really cool mods that I think are gonna deliver Maybe enough power to win. Straight bolt-on KO4 turbo. So KO4 would have been on a Golf R. Uh, different setup. As you can see, these are modified housings or whatever. $400 for the turbo and this downpipe here, which is a catted downpipe. So these two together with a tune, which is a key part of what we got to mm -hmm. do, should deliver us pretty good horsepower numbers. Also, by the way, people are saying at home, there's no way you paid 400 bucks for this. I'm not above <laughs> cheating a little bit, but I'm not going to cheat on the budget. I'll yeah. promise you that. I won't yeah. cheat on the budget. We also went ahead because we had enough budget. We have Audi S3 injectors. We also got those used for 200 the only new part we have is our IE high pressure fuel pump. This upgrades the internals of the high pressure fuel pump. You have to take the pump apart mm -hmm. and rebuild it. This is the kit to rebuild it, which weirdly enough, they dropped the prices by the $100 on this like last week. Yeah, it, was like, it was like 80 bucks. <laughs> so we got $399, $400, bucks, $200. Bucks, that is what, $1,000? We're $1,200 bucks in the car. I think we're gonna be close to that $800 in repair parts, and we're not counting labor here. Otherwise, <laughs> we, we already totaled, totaled out our budget. This setup should be around 330 horsepower and around 350 pound foot of torque. Cool transition. Oh, that was good. We timed that real nice. Mm -hmm. Feeling good about that. I, I saw, you knew, I saw it knew. coming yeah, and like, it I gotta was, jump in. We were simpatico. Yeah. Now, before we get to work, let's check in with Gears and Gasoline and maybe talk a little trash. Hey Charles, uh, things have been going really well on our end. Figured we'd give you a call and check in and see how things are going. It looks like you've got a cardboard box on top of your car back there, so it must be going great. Yeah, this it don't don't worry about the cardboard box. It is not a lot of parts that this car actually needed. Uh, also, yeah, here is here's the car that we are going to be thrashing the drag strip with and uh, making it go super fast. So I'm noticing you guys are sitting in your office, which must mean you're done. It's so easy with JDM cars. I mean, just to find something fast right out the gate. So you See, know. what we really figured out is that YouTube respects bought, not built. Um, but since you seem uh, a little curious, we're happy to show you the car. Yeah, uh, we we want to we want to see it. Oh, we get a we get a oh. lights off reveal. Oh, I'm excited. <laughs> what do you think? What do you think? <laughs> it looks like a giant piece of crap. It is. Turn the lights on and turn. Okay. Oh my goodness. Is that a CRX? A CRX. It's a EF EF Civic, but very oh. close. Oh, hood pins. Yeah, I like that. What? Oh wait, wait, wait. Do we want to show them that? Oh, maybe not. No, yeah. There's there's some stuff. Did did Hector get some Honda spoons to put in there? Ooh. Two T sixty six turbos. It's uh, it's it's pretty. It's in good shape. It's oh, pretty nice. fast. Are you guys removing the Bondo for weight reduction or? Yeah, I mean honestly, well, we probably won't have the money to. Uh, to even rattle can it? Do we talk about how much you spent on that car by itself? We can. Yeah, sure. We got it for thirty-five hundred dollars. You paid thirty-five hundred dollars for that? Yeah. Uh, okay. Wow. Okay. So it Deals must to be have had. an engine swap then. But yeah, okay. Okay. we we got something for you. Well, they bought a Honda. That's got to be an engine swap because nobody would pay thirty five hundred dollars for that car if it wasn't. So the car is a pile of junk, clearly. Yeah, uh, which means all the money must be under the hood. They also clearly have a huge weight advantage. I mean, that car Pretty probably big. weighs what, like eighteen hundred pounds? Gutted. Yeah, yeah, I would say eighteen, maybe less gutted, honestly. But if their car blows up, <laughs> and and we have a DSG, so we're cheating by not having the driver error. If they miss shift. If they have any bad launch, if they do anything wrong, we, we just automatically win, basically. Yeah. I feel pretty good about that for people who don't know how to drag race. I'm more nervous now than I was before. <laughs> I think you should be. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's enough trash talk. It's time to get to work. I'm gonna pull our old turbo off the cylinder head, 
so that we can get into the process of replacing our intake valves. Now, all this is gonna come off the backside here. Some of this stuff we're gonna transfer to our new turbo, like this piping, these coolant and oil lines. I need to be able to move the head around to be able to replace the valve. Paul, what do you got going on over there, buddy? Uh, well, I don't know how, on the VR6 we did, I did a lot of cleaning, which uh, it was my engine, so I understood. <laughs> you uh, didn't realize that's actually why I brought you here? Apparently, was to just clean my, my stuff job for me? is guy who cleans engine parts. <laughs> hey, but you know what? You're probably doing a fine job. I think it is time to say bye bye to our old turbinator. This one may live to see another day, but not today, because we got an upgrade with two Ds for a double dose of where should I put this turbo? Uh, hey, Paul, you want to clean this turbo too? <laughs> I'm just gonna set this here. Do we have to don't, swap over all those lines? Don't worry, yeah, don't worry about it. Okay, so we are at like the main part of this entire engine repair, replacing our intake valves. So here's our valve, this is one of our other bent ones, and in the head, it actually sits like this. So this is our valve spring, and this is the top piece of the valve spring. Some people call it a retainer, and I like that. This little tiny guy that's tapered right here is the keeper, and what this does is this sits right here in the groove, on the valve and then this spring pressure pushes up against it and that's what holds it all together. So when I compress this spring, it allows me to gain access to this, remove it, we can pull the valve out from the bottom. I have this tool, this is a valve spring compressor tool for overhead cam heads and the way it works is this piece sits on the valve right here, your head kind of rides in the middle and then this piece, when you roll this handle down, pushes and compresses the valve spring and it also has this opening to give you access to get like a magnet or a keeper tool to grab the keepers, pull them out, and then we detension the spring and we can remove the spring, pop the valve out. I'm having to clean a ton of carbon uh, out of this head, more than I, I probably planned for, but I shouldn't be surprised about. No. I don't guess. All right, so we're looking at the valves that came out and carbon is a problem on direct injection engines. You can see here's a new valve and then this is the old valve. So a lot of people hope that they're gonna be able to spray some uh, some like chemical down the intake and it's gonna get rid of all the carbon that's on there. It's okay maybe as a preventative, but if you look how hard this is, just so I have to push on it. I mean, I'm pushing on this as hard as I can and it's not budging at all. So you can maybe break off chunks like that if you really get under it, but a chemical is not going to like get in there. You can see how hard that is to break off. And so I'm gonna keep in mind, if you even can accomplish breaking it off, all of these pieces are gonna go straight into your engine. We're also gonna replace the valve stem seals. So this sits at the top of the guide that holds the valve in place. Ideally, if we had unlimited budget, we would wanna go ahead and replace the valve guides as well. That's more of a machine shop thing. I mean, really, we probably should have just went ahead and sent this to the machine shop, but we're in it at this point. So we're gonna keep on doing our thing and make this car fast. I thought that was my blood for <laughs> so we uh, yeah. it, it was my blood quite a bit. So uh, I knew it got a lot of places, but luckily not over here. Yeah, I'm really nervous right now. Yeah, I'm gonna move my face out of the way. Face right there. Yeah. Why? Because it's, he said it's not seated properly, which means it could just right on out of there. And it's gonna have a lot of That's force better. behind it. How Wait, it, so you haven't done this in 30 years? I'm not, <laughs> I'm not that old. 65 years? <laughs> 30 years, I was seven in 30 years ago. <laughs> Dang, I didn't uh, know you were a tech school when you were seven. I'm out, I'm out here good. in second grade <laughs> doing valves. That's the kind of power that I have. Seventh grade, second grade, seven years old, rebuilding heads. For replacing all eight of our intake valves, I'm gonna get the valve seat in the cylinder head as clean as I possibly can. Then I'm gonna use some grinding compound to fully seat the valve into the head. After that, I can take that spring compressor, compress the spring, install the keepers, and get all eight of our intake valves properly installed. I was gonna ask you, oh. have you looked at the camshaft? Have you looked at it to make sure that it's fine to reuse? It's not fine. <laughs> <laughs> it's not fine to reuse. Uh, if you take a look here, You'll see, okay, this is actually a good example because you can see right here. So this is the cam uh, lobes mm -hmm. and you can see the lobe is actually pretty clean. But if you look at here, this is the, what you call the cam journal uh, or where it rides on the, the cam bearings, which is really the head. And those lines in there are not a good sign. I don't know if you can see the lines in the camera. One of the things you want to do generally with this stuff is see if you can feel the grooves in it with your fingernail. We know this will run. This for sure will run. 
This is not gonna like nuke immediately. We might be able to beat the death out of this engine in this last a while. So stay tuned to find out. I think we'll have a bit of noise. I think it'll be louder than it would normally be if it were perfect. Okay. I think we're gonna have a bit of <laughs> abnormal oil consumption even for this engine because we don't know conditions of the rings or anything like that too. Yeah. Other than that, I think we'll be fine for a while. Had a pretty significant casualty already in my knuckle that I've made bleed everywhere. I do have some blood I've added right here to this cam cage. Uh, it lives there now. My DNA is per permanently attached to this car. So the goal today is to get the engine reassembled and pull the interior out of this car and uh, add it KO4 injectors and high pressure fuel pump. Hey, look at these sticky boys that we got. Hoosier drag radials, I think DR2s. You know they're fast because look at, they got like a checkered flag on them. I think we write a uh, winner circle on, yeah. the, on the side right here, winner circle. Oh. On, the, on this side over here, yeah. sorry JDM boys on this side. These are 225, 45, 17, which is the factory size of the tire. Unfortunately, when you get into a drag slick or even a radial with a 17 inch wheel, you end up with like a 335 tire because they're meant to go on the back of like muscle cars and that. This was the best I could do without getting new wheels as well and unfortunately we couldn't go down too small on a wheel to like a 15 which is what i would have preferred because that won't clear the brakes right so uh this was i think the best compromise and we're 520 dollars shipped i am swapping over all the lines from our original ko3 turbo to the ko4 uh, so that just involves all these uh, oil feed return lines coolant lines uh, this is the n75 valve here that controls the wastegate and uh yeah that's what we're doing now that we got the guides in, the next several minutes or so, really going to be all about cleaning. And cleaning. And cleaning. And cleaning. And more cleaning. And some more cleaning. And hoping that we got all the metal out of all the parts of the engine. While we're waiting on a few parts, this is a great opportunity to go ahead and start gutting that interior, you know, for weight reduction. Bro. One thing you want to do with, with a car to make it fast, remove as much weight as possible. So roughly every 100 pounds you remove from the car equals one tenth of a second, or that's the general rule of thumb. Uh, so we're gonna to try to take out as much weight as we can. Now, we're not gonna go crazy with this teardown. We're not gonna be pulling sound deadening out of it or anything like that. At least I don't think so at this point. The general feeling about this car is it's a little bit too nice in terms of the total car to just destroy it. We're gonna take all this stuff out with the intention that at some point in this car's life, we'll put it all back together. Once we have everything we're gonna take out out of the car, we're also gonna weigh it to see how much weight we actually were able to lose. So I'm gonna guess about 70, 75 pounds or so in the comments, drop and let us know how much weight you think we'll be able to pull out of this interior of the Jetta. What is this? Oh, shit. No way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, boy. You better believe that I'm going to be putting this on Gears and Gasoline's car while they're not looking. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Dude, yeah, Nate, I mean, Vince, are these toenails? No, is that what that they is? They are. Dude, they're nails. Oh, Get the yuck. camera. Oh, my God. Oh, my God, bro. They're everywhere. Can you see how gross Dude, look that really at, is? Dude, look at over there, they're everywhere. Do you have the flashlight or anything? They're everywhere. Okay, so I was taking the driver's seat out and noticed something completely disgusting, this sea of finger or toenails all under here and look, like it goes all around the back, down the side, there's a nail all up in there. I mean, there's some snacks too, Paul, if you're hungry. Um, but that is so many fingernails or toenails. Uh, oh, we got to check for boogers on the side of the seat. That's usually There's no the boogers. Like. They're usually on the front here. Oh, wait. Is that boogers? That, <gasps> that might be boogers. That might be boogers. <laughs> right here. Ew. Okay, well, if I get hungry on race day, I'll just like <laughs> lean down and give a lick. Humans are disgusting. This is actually not that abnormal. It's you know, really not. That like boogers are way more common than nails I have never seen before. If you go to get your car worked on by somebody and they're doing all kinds of interior work and you're, and you're <laughs> flicking boogers out. underneath your seat and stuff like that and wiping them all what? under there, they're gonna find them and they're gonna know. Gonna know. You nasty. <laughs> so yeah, just or, eat, just eat your boogers like eat, everybody else. Just eat them like a regular person. <laughs> <laughs> Spill the yuck. Spill the yuck. Yeah, the gross stuff. This probably weighs three times what the carpet does. 
Still not worth it, but no, one hundred percent not worth it. You know, we make terrible choices. I think we've established. I that. mean, if we were doing things just because they were worth it, we would not have done anything with. We this car. definitely wouldn't be here right now. So we'll have to put the back. Uh, sorry, the driver's seat back in. Obviously. Yeah, I'm feeling pretty race car like, and you know yeah. what else is a white Jetta race car? Are you saying you want to do a complete mock-up of a Fast and, Mark III Fast and the Furious race car I in, a, in a Mark V? Two liter turbo DSG with front calipers, rear drum conversion. Two liter. <laughs> well, this is a two liter as that well. Was a two liter automatic. So, we, so we, and this, this is also is a two, two liter automatic. <laughs> Bro, we have to. This is our inspiration. There's something about engines that calms me down. Yeah, that is a lie. There's nothing about engines that calms <laughs> me down. Engines mostly ruin my day. We need a rocket man. Number one. That's because we're gonna be winners. Yeah, yeah. Unlike our JDM counterparts. Yeah. So Paul and I removed a pretty reasonable amount of the interior, but we were curious on just how much weight we actually saved. With all the stuff that we took out of the car, we dropped about 275 pounds. So by guess of 70 pounds, not even close. The big shocker was the passenger front seat coming in at almost 60 pounds. We'll probably have a little bit more weight to drop with things like the factory exhaust. So we're back at it. Uh, <laughs> In action. Charles and I are going to be assembling the engine. We have the cylinder head off, you can see. We've replaced valves. When I say we, I mean Charles has replaced the valves. So when they're wrong, my fault. It wasn't my fault is what I'm saying. <laughs> and what I'm saying is I hung the biggest risk on him because it's his to lose. So... I love, I love that you're in the position <laughs> of where like... If we win, you get to take yeah, credit. Yeah, take the credit. Like, hey. But if we don't, be like, hey, man, that was your car. <laughs> sorry. Yeah. sorry. The car blows up on the line, and it's all Charles' I'm fault. I'm super sorry. You suck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we're going to get to work. Now with our turbocharger bolted up, we can install and properly torque down that cylinder head. We're going to do a leak down test. This is the moment of truth. I don't really want to. He's a little scared, which I understand his scaredness, because this will determine probably how much our engine is sealing. Is it all coming out there? It is. Sure is. Wait. It's oh. the injector hole, though. Oh, we're dope. Right, we're so, dopes. So we. <laughs> Just kidding. We're stupid. <laughs> we are dopes, and uh, we didn't feel the injector holes. But I can just do this. I can no, I mean, it's, it's not working. Oh. We're going to put our injectors in and then get We're back We're going to have to bolt the fuel rail on, though. Yeah. Which means we have to bolt the intake manifold on. Do we? Yeah. Can we can't get the rail on no, separately? Not, like the new, the newer ones. Well, let's at least stick it in. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. And I would like you to meet Dr. Stupid. Uh, yes, it's our first day working on cars, I've specifically. Never liked it. <laughs> Uh, specifically all cars and... Specifically basic engine uh, mechanics yeah. 101. <laughs> Fun fact, direct injection engines have a hole in them directly for the injection. For the injection. <laughs> so... Luckily, we're just dumb. We are that. So dumb. Good news, we're dumb. So dumb. Before installing our S3 injectors, I'm gonna go ahead and reseal them. The seal at the bottom of the injector where it goes into the cylinder head does require a special tool kit in order to properly install it. The seals need to be formed to the injector. On the fuel rail side, it's just a simple seal that slides right on. And now we can go ahead and install those fuel injectors. Now we're installing the intake manifold to give us the ability to verify that we've installed all the valves properly. This is a cylinder. <laughs> test number two. <laughs> test number two with the holes that are empty filled. 7% leak. I'm good with that. What's going on? Well, now I'm plugging in the injectors because I failed miserably at doing that the first time. So here we are, um, uh, I'm doing it. And I, I think the, the question you had just asked me was, will we win a drag race with an injector delete? If they don't make it off the line because their car blows up <laughs> or they hit the gas and their seat rips through the floor and flips backwards, that we could probably win with no injectors. Next, we can go ahead and install our camshafts. I'm gonna be installing the camshafts as close to their proper TDC location as I possibly can. This should make timing the engine a little bit easier. We'll also throw a couple of new seals on those camshafts as well. Now, when you're putting on the sealant on these cam bridges, you need to make sure that you're putting it in the right spot. You saw me draw the line here down the side, but if you look like right here, there's these little channels on either side of the cam bearings, and also like here, 
here and really back over here. Those are oil galleys. You definitely don't want to put sealant in those oil galleys, otherwise you have no oil flow. That's also why you want to make sure you don't overdo it with the sealant, because it can actually squish out and clog these up right here. And Charles has tasked me with something that one might consider to be uh, grunt work probably would be a nice way to say it. And so what I'm doing is rem using this thread chaser to remove all of the junk from the threads. Now, the reason why is because you're not supposed to reuse these, but for budget constraints and because we're being cheap, cheap skates. Now that Paul's got a couple of our hardware bolts cleaned, we're gonna put our bridge on. We also need our timing tools. So this is actually a timing kit for several different engines. This bridge piece right here sits like that. And when you can fully bolt it on, it means our cams are locked in the right spot. Installing the timing chain and getting the cams timed together proved to be a little bit difficult. If our chain hadn't broken, I could have marked our old chain and our cams and used that to line them back up. I also wasn't able to get the cam variator off due to risk of damaging the bolt that holds it on. Because of that, it took me a couple of tries to get the cam chain timing correct. Paul has our new water pump going on. You can see our old one, super crusto. I don't know if you want to hold that in a place where someone can actually see it. <laughs> I'd rather leave it in the dark. <laughs> like that. Um, so that's our old crusty pump. We got a new pump going on. We are going to put all new timing components on. Paul's going to throw that on. I expect to not do this very well, but here we go. Correct, but not well, I should say. It's pretty snug in here, uh, and time belts are never fun to do. Can you believe it? Did you get it on? There was so little struggling involved with that. Good job. I really, I'm not gonna lie, this is way easier than I remember a 180 being. What are the chances this thing has a major problem, like it's going to blow up? Like on startup? Yeah, on uh, startup. Pretty we, low. We got a problem, I oh, think, yo, we can't solve it. I think it's super low that we have a problem like that. Could be an awesome car. I'm hoping it's good, because honestly, the car's pretty nice, and I would like to be able to get some more life out of it after we dominate the drag strip on some gears and gasoline and that tiny little Civic, that's probably gonna be way faster than this car if we're like really honest with each other about it. Oh, me? I'm just cleaning the, the mating surface for the oil pan. Uh, nothing glamorous, not like Paul's doing. Paul's got the glamour job. Uh, yeah. It's like he's working on his arms at the gym and I'm out here just doing some cardio. He's out here doing leg day. Hey Charles. Hey. How many times have you been to the gym? Just once. Uh, one time. I told you, I went to the gym once. Um, Never had to go back after that. I got all the fitness I needed. This is an hour where I'm just getting the feeling a little bit. We're like... We're getting the weird vibe? Things are gonna start getting weird. Like things somehow getting... I got this towel cut in the oil pan. <laughs> <laughs> How did that even happen? That's pretty cool. I hope I got oh, no. it all out. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. Well, when we have no oil pressure and we pull it back apart, we there's know a towel exactly <laughs> why. Shoved up in it. <laughs> For sure. This is the way when you have a floor, when you get fancy with your floor and you're looking for a bolt, this is what you have to do. So everybody that said when I did the video on this floor, Charles, good luck finding any hardware when you drop it. I don't have a problem when I drop it, but for some reason when Paul drops it, this is what has to happen. I didn't drop anything. That... So you just got me on a wild bantha chase I... here? I honestly... <laughs> he probably didn't even drop it. <laughs> KO4 cars require one longer bolt. Oh, because, I probably have one. Yeah, they probably, they have a machine, that machine piece mm -hmm. that you have, to, you have to do a longer bolt to actually get How all the way in. How much longer? Do you know? Quite a bit longer. Like a foot longer? Yeah, like yeah, at least a foot long. Like, so it's gonna be like, like a five dollar foot long. Five dollar foot long. I think in honor of our Honda friends, you should just run this one. Uh, what is that? <laughs> oh, <laughs> this, hey, it doesn't matter how long it is if we just self-tap it all yeah, the way in. I'd rather have it be on our DV. Let it self-tap itself. Ba -ba -da -ba. Da -da -da. Let's see if this <laughs> Need a thing to by one point some sort of device to open. Okay, I can't open this. I'm struggling. I thought you had been to the gym that time. I was struggling to just uh, live my life quarter mile at a time. One. See if this is the N6 by 30 Ooh. proper length. Wow. What? That you want to put some beauty washers on it too? Uh, like we can get real fresh. I feel like that would be a mistake. Yep, I agree. Doesn't fit. I. Oh. <laughs> it's, it's like. <laughs> 
It's not even close. You can just squeeze a clamp, squeeze a clamp around there. Can I maybe fill it with epoxy <laughs> and squeeze the clamp? Just put a whole tube of hard TV no. in there. What'd you do there, buddy? I've done it. What did you do? I've I've tightened this talk, this. Talk to our friends at home about sensor. what you got there. Okay, friends at home. I have installed the oxygen sensor in the upper portion of our downpipe. This will mount to our turbo. And now we have the obligatory exhaust noises that you make when you have a pipe off. What do you think? I have two questions. Do you think we will get pops and bangs? And do you think we will get DSG farts? Yes and yes. Well, pops and bangs. Yeah, we're going to get pops and bangs. We'll just like get some native pops and bangs. <laughs> That's the way it goes. The he's, part. Just, he's just <laughs> spitting in the pipe. <laughs> okay, so while Paul is buttoning up the uh, down pipe, he's dirty. Look how dirty your gloves are. Wow. Look at my good arms. On, good on you, bro. Look that's, at my arms. That's some work. You think gears and gasoline's getting that dirty? I doubt it. I doubt it. I doubt it. They might have some ink smeared on their, on their hand from cutting that check, okay. but that's about it. Bought, not built, son. Bought, not built. That's what the internet loves. So what I'm doing is I'm actually fitting one of our boost pipes. So. This is outlet side of the turbo, so our boosty air comes out of there and goes into here. Well, the factory, this is different from the factory outlet, so we're gonna have to make a, a little connection from this pipe to that pipe, and I didn't realize that till like earlier today, so I ordered one. So I have this hose. Uh, I got this hose at CarQuest. It's not correct at all, but what I'm gonna try and do is just kind of mock it up so that we can get the car running. This is a coolant hose, not a boost hose, just enough to get the car running and shake it down for any other problems. And then when our actual one comes, we'll install that. We're fighting each other. Uh, I know, I thought we were working together. Oh, we're doing, oh, we're working together. Okay. Oh, okay. You're not, no, no, you got a bad angle of your dangle. You're, you got it all wrong, see? Yeah. Yeah, see? Yeah, see? Yeah. Yeah, see? Now you can hammer, see? Now I can hammer yeah. away, except I can't reach it with a hammer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're doing. Well, I feel like a moron. Is You're, it close? You're doing. A, <laughs> am I doing anything? No, no, but I am. But I am. Well, you haven't done anything. Don't hit it from the oxygen sensor. That one's just a myth. It's not even going to get used. <laughs> That's that is true. That that oxygen Hold sensor. Hold on, now you got to rotate. Oh, that oxygen right. sensor is fake news. <laughs> that, that, one, that one is go. one hundred percent fake news. Yeah, this is good. Is it? What do you think the time? is gonna be that this car is able to run. Mm. Assuming it's not broken and runs at K04 all. KO4 stripped car, drag radials, tune, DSG tune. Stock GLI runs 15 to quarter mile. That's 200 horsepower at the crank. What do you figure we're adding horsepower wise? I say with this setup, we probably get somewhere, we know 100? we're in this somewhere, no, a little more than 100. We probably at the crank get somewhere in the three, Let's call it 320, 330 range. Okay. So we're adding 130 horsepower, let's call okay. it. Okay, 130 horsepower. I don't know what that equates to in a quarter mile at a time, like I live my life. Do you think we could cut below 14? I oh think, yeah, we can get think, into the 13s. You think we'll get into the 13s? Yeah, I think we can get into the mid 13s. Okay. Probably be my guess. Um, okay. I think so. that's ambitious, but I like where you're at with it. In order to maximize the amount of power we can get out of our upgraded turbo, we upgraded our fuel injectors, but we also need to upgrade our high pressure fuel pump. This is a high pressure fuel pump rebuild kit from Integrated Engineering. Upgrading the internals of our high pressure fuel pump will give us about 50% more displacement from the factory unit, allowing us to deliver more fuel and thereby getting more horsepower. Really the only thing that we're gonna retain from the original pump is the spring. This is a pretty straightforward DIY. There are instructions on Integrated Engineering's website on step-by-step -step on how to do it. I'll be sure to link that down in the description. I can tell you, you need to make sure that you're working very, very clean. Any dirt that gets into this pump while you're doing this rebuild can ruin the pump. I have heard of people rebuilding high mile pumps and end up having fuel leak into their oil. Now you definitely don't want that, so it may be worth going ahead, getting a new fuel pump and getting this rebuild kit, or if you'd rather, you can also buy one pre-built. Now we gotta put our spark plugs in, plug up our ignition coils, button up a couple more things, and we should be ready to fire this car up. This is a bullet dodged, and the precursor to what could have been a very bad day 
when your pocket screwdriver falls in the That's turbo. That's why you gotta be careful. That's why you gotta be careful when you're working on cars. I was you about can't... to plug this hole up, too. He was about to plug it, it up, man. about Andy. exactly what I was about he to do. He plugged it up with a screwdriver is what he did. <laughs> <laughs> now we have the coolant oil and our fluids in the system. We're actually just gonna check for leaks before we go to start up. Charles is finishing up some boost pipe related items. Uh, then we should be good to go down. I think we're good. Are we ready to fire? I, I think we're ready to roll. I got this engine cover. He's, some might say he's got it covered. Uh, also, warning, warning, warning. We have a straight pipe, two liters. So one, it's gonna sound like trash, and two, it's gonna be super loud. It's about to get noisy uh, in here. Yeah, so it's about to get wild. We all clear? Came with pops and bangs too. Pretty good. All right, well, hopefully you weren't wearing headphones for that, but uh, you know what? I actually think I have a solution to at least uh, connect our old exhaust while we work on it, and we'll figure out an exhaust solution after that, but uh, we need to check faults. To the scan tool. I'm gonna guess we got a whole bunch of faults. Now, some of these faults that we have are going to make sense because we don't have seats in and uh, other stuff. We're also waiting on our tune, so we're not gonna get wild just yet. Looks like I have an ECM fault. Okay, so uh, for better or worse, we have a timing fault, which is not awesome. So the car runs and starts, we didn't bust any valves, but we do have a timing fault. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna fix the exhaust so we can actually start the car and use our brain. And then we can check timing in the scan tool and see what we got going on. I found this coupler that I actually had from another project. And what we'll be able to do is we'll be able to attach this to the straight down pipe with a clamp. And then on this side, we'll use the factory clamp and attach it to the factory exhaust. This will allow us to, you know, drive the car without just being, um, you know, that guy. Okay, so we had that timing fault. We need to do a couple of things. One, since the car runs, even though maybe you shouldn't always start it with a timing fault, we can go in and look at measured value block 94, and that can show our timing adjustment. And as you can see here, it looks like it's way out. This is actually not enough, I don't think, to be a tooth out. But Paul, what I'm guessing is because the way we initially timed that, we probably have the tension on the wrong side of the tensioner mm -hmm. for the chain. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna go back through and we're gonna check our base timing, crankshaft to camshaft, and then the camshaft exhaust to camshaft intake and see where we're at. So the timing belt side of this was actually in time, everything was perfect on. On the cam chain side, the marks were in place, but because like Charles said, we thought the tension was, in, was an issue in terms of which direction it being on the wrong side. We remove it, we remove that adjuster, we're gonna retime it on the cam chain side to get everything squared away. Okay, so now that we got it all back together, we can start the car, go back in with our scan tool and look at that same measured value block. Now you'll see it says 28.0, KW is for degrees of crank rotation. That's exactly where we wanna be. That is the number, not 52 or 56 or whatever it said before. Minor issue, thankfully, and now we move on to the next phase of our lives. While Paul does some actual work, let's talk a little bit about tuning. I had my buddy Kevin from Apex Tuning come by and tune the car here. So we put two files on this car, both from Reflect Tuning. One is an ECM file, which allows us to use the upgraded injectors, upgraded high pressure fuel pump, upgraded turbo, not only use, but actually maximize the capability of. We also did a DSG tune, which I think, Paul, you probably agree with me, gives us the biggest advantage possible with this car, and that's launch control. Because if we can get off the line and go, I think we'll be able to mop the floor with the old Turbo Civic, Civic from our boys in yellow gears Driver and gasoline error yeah so we're hoping for granny shifting not double clutching like, like he should because i'm double clutching because this is a dual clutch gearbox and it has uh, double the clutches double the clutches now charles is going to test drive it to make sure it's not going to fall apart odds of it blowing up 12 percent. 12 percent. i vote zero <laughs> assuming it starts and runs right now i think it's i think it'll be good definitely not zero <laughs> Zero is definitely a number that is definitely way lower than it should be. Whoa, burnout. So concerns that he could run across while he's driving the car. We have unknown suspension, unknown brakes, unknown transmission. And we still had damage to the inside of the engine that 
potentially could lock up while he's driving it. So he's gonna have to figure out exactly what could be wrong. Uh, and here he is. <laughs> he seems like we got a problem. Bye, Bob the Hood. So, uh, so I, I was driving and everything was cool and like it was going well and then I pumped the throttle and the car cut off almost. So I had to full throttle it the whole way back. So usually in that case, oh, there's a little bit of oil here. Uh, no, that's fine. It's probably, it's, that's probably clean. this, this <laughs> is probably where this, this came from. So <laughs> what had happened was Charles had made a makeshift plug for this pipe temporarily until we remove it. It ejecto cedo cuzzed right out of its place. So these cars don't run well because they have a mass airflow sensor. So if I unplug this with this off, it should run fine. We can test it now. Charles can start it up and show you these cars run. So if you ever have a boost pipe pull off and you have a MAF car, you can just unplug the mass airflow sensor and the car should. Run, just like that. We do have a solution for this uh, because this car has the noise pipe. So this is the pipe where that's sitting down in the car where we have our noise pipe coming off. We got rid of all that noise pipe. This is out of a Passat. I grabbed this from the junkyard uh, the other day while we were kind of in between filming and this set me back a whopping $4.80 and there's no thing, it actually goes this way, nothing to pop right off. So a uh, couple more minutes and we'll put this on and we won't have that problem again. Problem solved. Problem solved. We solved the problem. Everything is awesome. All right, our Jetta is up and running, which is awesome. We have about $800 left to spend on modifying our car. However, I think before we make any more modification decisions, we need to get the car to the dyno and see how much power it makes. Once we know the power numbers, we can make a more informed decision on what the next modification should be. So, off to the dyno. All right, so we are at the dyno. Ian is putting the car up. We are going to run it and see how many horsepowers we get. Then we can actually do some calculation on power to weight and find that we're way outclassed by that Turbo Civic. My expected number is probably around 300 horsepower with the turbo and the fuel upgrades, but uh, I've been wrong a lot so far on this build with predictions, so hopefully we get more. I found the smallest fire extinguisher I could. If it fits a tip. So let's hope you don't need it. The horsepower and torque are a little low. The torque's not bad. The horsepower is a little low. Uh, we're concerned about maybe a boost leak, so uh, we're gonna probably run another with a log of boost so we can monitor that, see if we actually have a low boost situation. Okay, so we've done three dyno runs, and so far the numbers are a bit disappointing. Our torque numbers actually aren't that bad. We're right in the 300 range, which is good. Our horsepower is what we're lacking. It's about 40 horsepower less than I expected. So um, the positives are the car hasn't blown up yet, and we're getting a bit of an improvement with each run. It could be something as simple as some clogged up yuck in the exhaust. Ian's looking at some of the numbers, the boost numbers and whatnot, to see if, see if there's something we can do. Then I think we're gonna put a different file on it and see what the different file does. Okay, so we've made 253 horsepower and like 309 pound-feet of torque. I gotta tell you, 
It's less than I thought it would be. I'm not, I'm not particularly thrilled the horsepower wise. Torque is kind of in line with where we expected. Uh, the engine might be too sad. Yeah, it could be a number of things. We still got the factory intake, could be the exhaust could be just worn out old engine. All we can do now is hope that we've removed enough weight, we have enough power, we get a good launch, we have good traction, and that is enough to beat an 89 Honda Civic with a boosty boy. Whatever could we do to get more power? Let's try it with nitrous.